Now, this is a newer feature that's been added to Reaper 7.46. So make sure you're updated to get this functionality. Now, the purpose of track pinning or pinning our tracks is you can put our tracks at the top and they'll stay there as we scroll through our project. So if I wanted to pin this vocal track, I could right click it, go up here to pin tracks to top of a range view. Now this track is pinned. We can make it bigger by dragging this up and down by the track or down here in the lower line for the whole pinned section. So if we pin some other track, let's drag the base up here as well. Now both these tracks are pinned and we can adjust the pin area right over here. We can still adjust the size of each track from here, but the pinned area is now separate above here with the other tracks below. But now, if we scroll up and down, those tracks stay in view as we scroll through the other tracks in the project. And we can remove tracks from up here just by dragging them back down. Let's make the vocal a bit bigger. And notice that the track number for our vocal stays at number three. So it's not changing the order of our tracks, it's just putting this track at the top of the arrange view. So again, we could scroll through our project while always seeing our vocal track. And we can resize the area right from here and drag tracks up and down to put them in or take them out of the pinned area. And we could also use a mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And if we do it over here, it's going to zoom our tracks up and down, but notice it ignores the pin tracks. So that functionality only works on the non-pinned tracks. If we do it up here, it still zooms the tracks below the pinned area. So we can't zoom up here to change the track sizes by default, but we can do that with a preference. Let's open our preferences, control P on the PC, command comma on the Mac, and if we scroll down under appearance to the zoom scroll offset pane right over here, this is on by default. It disables the mouse wheel vertical zoom for our pinned tracks. So we can turn this off if we want. And now we could zoom our pinned areas the same way we zoom the unpinned areas. Bring this up and down with our mouse wheel and do the same with our pinned tracks. So you can see better. If I pin the base with it, again, it zooms just the pinned areas. We'll put the mouse down here to zoom the non-pinned areas. Now the purpose of this, besides keeping tracks at the top of a window, is we can compare our pin tracks to the non-pinned tracks a lot easier. Let's say we want to line up our vocal with the background vocals. We can now do it a lot easier from here. We drag this around to match this vocal, and we're doing it with track six against track three. So that's the benefit of pinning our tracks. As before, we had to change the track order to do this. Now we can compare any track to another just by pinning it and then scrolling to the different tracks in our project. Let's do the same thing with our drums. We could pin this track. So it stays on top. Let's say we want to line this up with our percussion track. Again, we could line it up a lot easier with the drum track already pinned. Line it up by the transients. And again, this is track one against track eight. So it's a lot easier to do this with different tracks. When we can scroll to different tracks up and down and compare them to the pin tracks above which again was pretty difficult before as you had to rearrange the order of your tracks. Now we don't, we can just pin them. Now this will also work for the master track. If we go up here to the view menu and view the master track, we could pin the master track as well. And if you're working with new projects, the master track will be pinned by default. But either way, we could pin and unpin it right from here. And now, we can see our master track all the time. Scroll up and down, and no matter what, we're always gonna see our master track in view. See what's going on on this meter as we scroll through our project. 
I built a house from candies. And again, this is pinned by default. But we could turn it off if we don't want that behavior. There's a few actions that go with track pinning. Let's open the action list by hitting the question mark. And we can type in the filter track colon pin tracks. And here's some actions that'll work with pin tracks. We could override the pinning. So let's pin our drums and vocal pin tracks. We could override that pinning with this action. So now they're not pinned, but notice there's a little indicator letting us know that these tracks are normally pinned. So they're not pinned right now. We could scroll up and down as normal because the override is on. Double click it again to turn it off. And these tracks are pinned again. So it's a great way of temporarily turning off the pinning. And of course, you could assign a keyboard shortcut or a toolbar button for this. And this action will pin tracks for us. If you don't want to right click to do it, let's unpin these. If I want to pin my vocal, just trigger this action. And now the vocal is pinned. Again, we could scroll up and down, and the vocal track always stays on the top of our screen. And we could also show or hide the pin tracks. So let's pin our drums and bass with our vocal. And if we trigger this action, it's going to hide those tracks. We can still see all the other tracks and they behave as normal, but we've hidden the pin tracks. Pretty useful for hiding the pin tracks so you can scroll through our project like normal. Then open this up again and get back our pinned tracks. And again, you can assign these actions to any keyboard shortcut you want or put them on a toolbar. So that's pretty much it. That's track pinning in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Thank you.